Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports. And today we're taking a look at two very popular Max Cushion Stability Daily Trainers. We have the New Balance Fresh Foam X Vongo V6 and the Asics Gel Kyano 30. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video and the spell synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. Now the reason we're taking a look at the Vongo V6 and the Kano 30 is they are both popular or max cushion stability daily trainers, great for runners that want some additional support on the medial side. Essentially, they do a great job of keeping your ankle from rolling inwards. And I will say, while they are both stability shoes, they implement their stability technology in completely different ways, and I thought it would make for an interesting comparison. So let's talk about it. As far as price goes, the Vongo is $165, while the Keanu is $160, so $5 cheaper. The stats for a running shoe are always a little bit tricky depending on the brand, but for New Balance, they give all their stats for a men's size 9.5, and, and it weighs 10.7 ounces with 30 millimeters in the heel, 24 in the forefoot for a brand new updated 6 millimeter drop. Now, for the Keanu, on the other hand, their stats were given for a men's size 9, and it weighs the same as the Vongo in a 9.5, so it also comes in at 10.7 ounces, again, for a men's size 9, and has a whopping 40 millimeters in the heel, 30 in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. So you're going to have a bit more stack height and a bit more of a drop here on the Keanu compared to the Vongo. Moving on to the uppers, I will say they feel completely different and don't share many similarities. So let's start off by talking about the Vongo. The Vongo V6 has this really cool looking knit upper material, has a little bit of elasticity to it, not a whole lot like we saw with the 1080 V12, but just enough to help kind of conform to your foot. And I will say the breathability, just below average, knit uppers typically run to the warmer side of things, and that holds true here with the Vongo as well. With regard to the fit, I will say it was true to size, although rather narrow. The good news is this shoe does come in wide as well as extra wide. The knit upper is pretty comfortable, but I do have to say the plastic toe cap that supports the upper towards the top of the toe box wasn't perfectly fused together on my left shoe. So I had this plastic piece just jamming into my left toe. Again, only on my left shoe, so I think it might be just a one-off manufacturing defect but could potentially be an issue for the upper durability and reliability. And the long term, I just wanted to point that out. The tongue is very lightly padded. It does a decent job of keeping lace pressure off, and it is gusseted with strips of fabric on the lateral and medial side to keep it in place. I also noticed when feeling the inside of the shoe, they fused a small bit or basically created a plastic overlay on the inside on the medial part of the upper to give you some additional support, which makes sense since this is a stability shoe and it's supposed to keep you from rolling inward. So it's not on the lateral side, but on the, again, on the medial side, they have this very thin plastic overlay to kind of reinforce the upper on this section. And finally, moving to the back of the shoe, the ankle and Achilles area has a moderate amount of padding and the heel counter is decently stiff and rigid, which is quite important for a stability shoe. Overall, I thought the upper did a great job of keeping your foot in place. I thought the lockdown was excellent and that knit upper is quite comfortable, but again, does run a bit narrow and snug. And the only real major complaint is that poking sensation of plastic on my left toe only, which is probably just a manufacturer's defect. But I'm quite happy with the look and feel of this New Balance Bongo upper. Moving on to the Keanu 30 upper, it's a bit more accommodating, although it does come in wide as well. Felt like the toe box had a little bit more room. It is true to size and I thought had a great lockdown. The heel calorie is much more stiff and has much more padding as well so this is kind of the more luxurious more well padded option same thing kind of goes for the tongue more padding here and it is gusseted as well the fabric is not knit it's a more traditional engineered mesh about average breathability but definitely more breathable compared to the vongo you're going to have that classic a6 experience if you tried an a6 running shoe you'll be very familiar with the what the kano 30 provides and i quite like it just a little bit more space a little bit more padding a little bit more plush, but also part of the reason why the shoe weighs just slightly more. Moving on to the midsoles, these are also completely different and really don't have any similarities as well. So let's start with the Vongo. The midsole has been completely redesigned, and yes, I know it's still Fresh Foam X, but this version of Fresh Foam X, at least in my opinion, feels springier and a little bit more dense, just has more life to it, again, in my opinion. And it has two layers here, so we have a two-layer approach of Fresh Foam X. The top layer is going to be a softer version, and then the bottom layer is going to be a more dense and slightly firmer addition. 
Now to separate these two layers of fresh foam X, we have an EVA plate, if you will, that has these kind of holes taken out of it. And it is asymmetrical. If you notice on the lateral side, it goes a bit lower. And then on the medial side, it comes up a bit higher, which makes sense because this bottom layer is that more dense, slightly firmer foam. So it gives you more support on the medial side than the lateral side, giving you that inherent overall stability. The plate also tries to stiffen up the shoe a bit and help with energy transfer, which I think it does a decent job of. But New Balance kind of went back to the drawing board. Top layer, softer foam, bottom layer, a bit more firm with a plate in between. And then I guess technically still had that posting design since that firmer foam is higher on the medial side than the lateral side. The Kano, on the other hand, has a much larger and bulkier midsole, which is Flight Foam Blast Plus. Does a decent job of giving you some energy return. I quite like it. Now, the stability mechanism here is called the 4D Guidance System. ASICS loves to brand everything. Essentially, there's four components here, as the name obviously implies. On the medial side, you have this green bit of foam, which is actually rather soft and energetic. It's a bit bouncier. It kind of acts as almost an arch or medial support, kind of to keep your foot from rolling inwards. That's the first component. The second thing is a large beveled heel. Gives you a nice kind of easy transition area to land on. Then you also have this sculpting on the lateral side, which allows for easier lateral compression and gives you that medial support. And then you have that incredibly wide outsole platform that gives you a large stable base to land on. And the other thing that's actually not mentioned in the 4D guidance system is these mini foam walls on the lateral and medial side that kind of help secure your foot to the platform as well. So I do consider the Kano to be the more stable shoe just because that heel section is more rigid. You have a larger platform and just a bunch more components that offer stability and guidance. And for the Vongo, it almost didn't feel like a stability shoe. It does offer some light guidance, but when wearing it, you almost kind of feel like you're wearing a neutral shoe. Now, when you put this on compared to a true neutral shoe, you start to feel that arch or kind of medial support. But overall, I will say this is more of a light stability shoe than like a true max stability shoe, which I think the Kano falls into. So if you're someone who really wants a lot of support, I'd probably lean more towards the Kano 30 than compared to the Vongo. I also incorrectly assumed that the Vongo was going to be the stiffer shoe because it has that plastic plate or EVA film plate, whatever you want to call it, through the midsole, and that it would have better torsion rigidity and just would flex less. However, when kind of twisting it in hand and then doing the same thing with the Kano, I noticed that this is much more rigid. I think that's partly because it just has a much larger, much more dense midsole. Another one other minor thing, this does have pure gel in the heel, so a small bit of gel directly underneath your heel. So just another bit of cushioning, but that's beside the point. The Kano is a much more stiff, stable, and slightly more rigid shoe compared to the Vanga. So I thought I'd just point that out because most of the times when you hear of a plate, you really do think of a very rigid shoe. And while that is somewhat the case here, the Kano is going to be the much more stiff option. So after trying these two, I will say, I think the Vanga is the more versatile stability max cushion daily trainer. It's also much faster as well. That's because I think it's a lighter shoe, not as bulky and just feels easier to pick up the pace in. The 40 millimeters of stack height you have on the counter 30 and its massive midsole just comes off slightly clunky when you try to pick up the pace. And that really wasn't the case here with the Vongo V6. And I really do like this version of Fresh Foam X, which feels noticeably different compared to prior versions. Prior versions, at least to me, it was fine. It just didn't have a whole lot of life to it. And I think with all the new foams coming out, this new version kind of keeps pace with a lot of other brands, especially the Flight Foam Blast Plus, which I really do like in the Kano. The only kind of downside of the Kano is it's just too big and a little bit bulky. So I think this works as a more nimble and versatile stability daily trainer. However, if you're going for a slow, long run, or if you're just going to be on your feet all day, I think the Kano 30 is the better option. It's more stable, noticeably softer in the heel, and a little bit softer in the forefoot. Um, you do have that plate or plastic kind of right underneath your heel on the Vongo. But overall, this is a little bit more plush, a little bit more luxurious, not as versatile. But if you're wearing this thing all day or you're going on a long run or you just want a lot of stability and guidance, Kano is going to be your shoe. Or if you're someone who wants some light stability, didn't feel like a stability shoe when I first put it on. You really had to kind of try out a neutral shoe and it's this shoe to really kind of feel the differences. I think the Vongo will be your friend if you want that versatile light stability option that can also kind of pick up the pace if you want to. Kind of a more classic workhorse trainer, if you will. I don't think they were trying to save a whole lot of weight just because you have the knit upper and that kind of adds the weight. And then that kind of brings us to the outsole. The outsole on the Vongo has a ton of rubber coverage and it is quite thick as well. The interesting thing, however, is it doesn't have any horizontal flex screws. The flex screws go down the forefoot. 
If you take a look at the counter, you'll notice you have these flex grooves that go across, which allow for easier kind of transitions and bending, especially in the forefoot. Now, the midsole here is so thick, it doesn't make such a difference, but compared to the slightly smaller Vongo, this helps, again, stiffen up the forefoot, makes it snappier, and helps give the shoe a little bit more torsion rigidity. The Kano also, ton of rubber coverage here with AHAR Plus, more durable rubber in the heel, and then they add rubber, a lot more of it through the midfoot to help with twisting and bending. But like I said before, the midsole is so massive, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Over the last year, stability running shoes have become much more interesting. I think the Vongo and the Kano are both great examples of that. I actually wasn't expecting to like the Vongo as much as I did, and that's for a couple reasons. Fresh Foam X historically hasn't been my favorite running shoe foam, and this update I think moves in the correct direction, has a bit more life to it and a bit more pop. Feels quite fun underneath your foot. And then this unique stability mechanism of having an EVA film or plastic plate, whatever you want to call it, I think makes this a more enjoyable stability running shoe. It doesn't feel like a max stability option, but more of a light stability running shoe. Again, it was kind of hard to tell it was actually a stability daily trainer. And then on the other hand, I, it's kind of fun to have a stability shoe that's this large. A lot of times stability running shoes are firm. They're not as soft. They don't have a lot of life to them. And having uh, Flight Foam Blast Plus in such a large package and just a massive midsole while still offering a lot of medial support I think was a pleasant surprise and I'm happy to see ASICs doing this. I know a lot of fans of the Kano probably weren't happy because it's a complete change from what they've done historically, but I quite like it. And like we talked about before in the review, the Vongo, more versatile. It's a faster training option, a little bit heavier compared to something like maybe like the Tempest, which I really do like with its Power Run PB foam. And then you have the Kano, which I think is more of the cruiser stability shoe. Not my favorite for going fast just because of how large and bulky it is, but it is quite pleasant if you are going on a long run and just want some guidance underfoot. So let me know in the comments which option would you go with and what is your favorite stability running shoe. I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.